Welcome back to the Road Along Channel here in a windy Vasiliki. I'm on a 4-2 Spy, Whoa! stacked, and a 103 Ignite from Starboard. Both set up completely on factory settings. I've done nothing special to them. This is exactly how they come out of the box, and beautiful. I'm absolutely stacked. This is definitely should have had a smaller sail, but it's rigged up with a boom on, and you know what it's like when you've got a boom on it. If it's rigged and ready, that's the one I'm going to take. And this little session, I've come a long way downwind to show you how to ride through a bit of chop and bump. Woo, that was a fun one. Here we go. Now there was a key word in that opening just there that I think is important and that's ride. You want to survive in bumps and chops and uneven water, which is, let's be honest, what we're going to be sailing in most of the time. You need to ride through the waves, ride through the chop and pick a route accordingly. Just being stubborn as you can be and locking into, oh, there's a playful one, locking into one position. You basically lose all suspension, all smoothness, and you're at the mercy of whatever gets given to you right in front of you. What I'm doing just now is adjusting my foot pressure, adjusting my commitment to the harness and trying to absorb the bumps as much as I can, like suspension working on a car. If I was just to go in a straight line with a locked out, this is my windsurfing stance, oh, it starts to get a bit more rattly. So ride the wave, ride the chop and pick your route accordingly. Good windsurfer through chop and waves, not going to go in a straight line. I don't know how choppy it actually looks in the camera, it's probably distorted just a little bit, but it's probably kind of near waist up into my thigh sort of chop, and it's the same as I'm coming around here. I've got to pick that position for the jive. Where am I going to turn? I'm going to look for the jive that's possibly a little bit flatter or in between the waves, and probably, possibly, make it even a little bit tighter than maybe you would on the flat water. And in the air, that wasn't the best one. I'm going to blame the camera. There's a camera sticking 20, 30 centimetres out the front of that, so I couldn't quite do what I wanted. Now, of course, you don't have to just avoid the ramps, though. Hopefully, they're teeing up nicely. So one of the key things for riding through chop and waves is, of course, going to be looking and reading and going, oh, there's a... <laughs> it's almost as if I planned it. There was a wave right there to kick the jump off. But it needs to be deliberate, it can't just be a, whoa, slap, there's a ramp. So I'm trying as much as I can to look 20, 30, 40 metres ahead of me. Of course, also slightly to windward to see where those, wait, to see where those ramps are. And now I touched upon something just there that I think is actually quite key about foot pressure and adjusting that foot pressure rather than just locking in one position. And that's the same with the harness commitment and your hands on the boom. They don't necessarily stay in one place. You need a little bit less power, bring them slightly forwards. A little bit more power, like bear it away into the wave, into that bit of chop, bring them slightly back. And adjust how much you're actually committing to each hand. Ideally, of course, the majority of your weight is in your harness. Your hands are just there to guide that run. And like you see now, work your way through that chop, not necessarily in a dead straight line. Now, there's a few more little nuggets of wisdom I could go into, but I think as a brief little overview, that's quite a good starting place. Pick a good route through the chop, ride the board, not just lock into one position. Use that trough to bear away a little bit, or even use the back of the ramp to bring you upwind just that little bit more. 
read the wind, read the waves so you can make the necessary adjustments and change the foot pressure, harness commitment and hand pressure, and even the positioning of where they are on the board or the boom to make it less of a battle, less of a struggle and actually relax and enjoy that ride a bit more because chop is so much fun once you realise that it's there to be ridden and not just a hindrance that sends you slapping all over the place play in those ramps and have a bit of fun thanks as always and I will see you next time back on the Ride Along channel